Verse 5, chapter 5, verse 4 says, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you God live together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. The glory is not good. Know ye not that a little live and even as we love. So uh, maybe uh, being a man that the apostle Paul is, 
he took it personally. And, and uh, he, as we have read that some people were, uh, uh, the impression that Paul gave to some people were that he's only disciplining us to show us his authority. I'm the apostle, don't mess with me. Yun yung bintang nila kay Paul. They, they accused him of that. Uh, marami pa silang bintang, sabi. Yung mga letter mo nga sabi, nag-irapindi din eh. And uh, if you will, if you will uh, study the Bible, before 2 Corinthians, dalawa na yung letter na sinem ni Paul sa Corinthian church. And uh, sabi ng mga iba na naninira sa simbahan, uh, double meaning yung mga letter mo. Nagpapatama ka, hindi maintindihan. Sabi ni Paul, hindi, kung ano yung sinabi ko, yun lang ang ibig sabihin ko. So uh, uh, that, that is uh, what, what we studied last time. But here, in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, Paul is starting to change his tone. Uh, I believe for several reasons. Maybe he saw uh, na kailangan niya talaga mag-adjust and, uh, and a great man of God knows how to adjust to the congregation. And he saw that the people took it uh, in the wrong way. Siguro sabi niya, hindi niyo pala kaya. Hindi niyo pala kaya yung ganitong klaseng disiplina. Hindi niyo kaya yung klaseng disiplina. Hindi niyo kaya yung ganitong klaseng meat. Di ba sa first Corinthians sabi niya, uh, I am treating you as babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with meat of the word of God. Bakit ang ibuda ko lang kayo? Sabi niya sa mga tao sa, Cor- sa Corinth. Now, uh, we read 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 because it is um, uh, connected to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Paul is instructing this church to restore a, a, a brethren that has uh, fallen. Paul is instructing the church how to restore the brother. Uh, ang kung hindi po dito uh, clear kung ano yung kasalanan, uh, there are two, uh, uh, there are two prevailing um, uh, thoughts dito sa uh, asalara kasi general yung pag-address ni Paul sa kanila eh. First, baka yan yung tao sa 1 Corinthians chapter 5, yung nakikipag-relasyon to sa asawa ng tatay niya. Na sinabi ni Paul, binasa natin kanina, to deliver such a one to Satan, uh, para to support the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved. Pwede siya yung hindi din ang sinasabi ni Paul dito. Or pwede naman, na yung pagbalik ni Paul, merong isang tao doon, member, that did something wrong to him. Personally. Kaya sinabi niya dito sa uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 na hindi lang, hindi lang naman ako yung nasaktan. Lahat kayo nasaktan din. Sabi niya po. So, so ayusin nga rin. Ayusin na natin. Next is nagpapakita naman na siya ng uh, uh, dito, pagpapakumbaba. So, this afternoon, we're going to study not only about restoration, but about discipline. And, um, you know, in, in, in churches nowadays, discipline is in, kung hindi kulang, non-existent sa mga churches. And a simple reading of church history, may kita natin that church discipline is in the heart of every church. Sa pagbabasa po namin ng, uh, ng church history and, and, and the confessions of faith ng mga churches, yung disiplina ay napangahalaga. Actually, hindi lang, uh, actually, para sa kanila, uh, kaya mayroon church discipline, para yung mga tao, para yung matakot na gumawa ng hindi maganda. Now, in the Bible, we, we, we don't need to go to those history books, but we, we only need to, to stick with the Bible. In the Bible, maraming iba pong klaseng discipline. May discipline up sa mga nagtuturo ng false doctrine. May discipline sa mga elders, mga preachers, sa pastor, mga kakamalik. And actually, for your information, even the pastor is subject to church discipline. Kaya po pag may narinig po kayong pastor na sinabi that uh, the church has no right to discipline me, that pastor is speaking the doctrine of the devil. It's not true. Uh, sabi, sabi ni, ni Paul sa 2 Timothy, uh, although iba yung pag-handle ng discipline sa elders, sabi, pagka mayroong naninira ng elder, uh, uh, receive not an association, ba't dapat mayroong mga kasama? Pero kung napatulayan ay ang elder na ay nagkamalit, rebuke before all so that he will be an example. Para makita sa church, yung pastor na hindi nakaligtas, tayo pa kaya? Actually, yun yung sabi niya po sa kay Timothy. Kaya sabi niya, pagka may elder, and during those times, in every church, maraming elder, hindi lang sa, pagka may elder na nagkamali, sa harap ng lahat, i-rebuke niyo. Para maging halimbawa na sa men's church. Para makita na yung walang above uh, the Bible. Walang tao sa simbahan na above the law of God. Walang tao sa simbahan that's above the agreed upon church quality. No, walang tao sa simbahan na above the word of God. Not even the pastor. And that is something that we are uh, working uh, uh, towards dito sa ating uh, pag-organize. 
Now, pero po, uh, given na mayroon iba ibang klaseng disiplina sa church, we're just going to focus on this uh, passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4 to 13. Ngayon, ang, ang, ang case po dito is public offense. Uh, kung nabasa niyo po yung... Pwede lang po kasi. <coughs> kung nabasa niyo po yung church policy, iba po yung, uh, iba po yung procedure sa private offense, iba po yung procedure sa public na nangyayari. Okay, pagka private, kanina na dinidiscuss natin, ikaw lang ang offense ka ni Cedric, si Cedric lang ang kakasabi mo. You don't have to bring it to the church. But, kung hindi siya nakinig, magsasama ka, preferably, yung patos, isa ko sa isama mo, yung pastor, at pag mga preachers, you make sure na yung isasama mo hindi bias at hindi mo best friend, at hindi mo makampi, kakausapin yung si Cedric. Now, when Cedric, uh, hindi pa rin siya nakinig, that's the time that the, the, church, that, that the offense has to be made uh, known to the church. Hindi po first step na pag may ginawa sa Cedric, sumbong agad kay pastor. Hindi po first step na pag may nakita ka yung ginawa sa Cedric, si Cedric, sabihin agad sa mga kaibigan. The very first step, uh, according to the book of Matthew, is to talk to Cedric. And, and I believe that this is not easy to do. We are not used to this. It's a uh, confrontation is difficult. Mahirap po na nating ang drama of ito sa iyo. Meron na ba dito gumawa na lang ganyan? Yung consistently gano'n ang ginagawa? Parang mahirap, di ba? Ang default natin ay dapat kay pastor. Ang default natin ay dapat kay best friend. Ang default na, default na tayo dapat kung sino yung kaibigan natin, the close natin. And everyone is guilty of that, even me, even the preachers, maybe. Lahat po tayo, may ganun. Yung mga may asawa siguro sa asawa ang ganun sa atin. But the Bible is clear na kung lalapit ka, doon sa kung sino may problema. So that has to be practiced, that has to be applied. If, if, kung gusto natin maayos yung ating, uh, yung ating problema. Now, we're here in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, let's, let's go there. Uh, Makikita po natin dito anong klase ng discipline na ginawa nila dito sa case um, ni, nung, nung nangyari dito sa 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, we will just go through from verse 4 until verse number 13. First, let's see the authority of discipline. Sino po bang may authority na mag-pass ng discipline sa church? Verse number 4, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, may kita po natin dito that Paul is giving the discipline, uh, yung, 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 yung process of discipline to the church. And if you're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1, the, the letter itself is addressed to the church, not to an individual in the church, not to the pastor, not even to the elders. The church, the, the letter was addressed to the church. So now Paul is instructing them, uh, pagkakayo yung sama-sama, kung anong araw mo kayo nagkikita-kita and you're corporately, uh, you're gathered together, eto ang gagawin nyo. Now Paul, the reason why si Paul ay nagpukutos, he has this special authority. Uh, siya ay isang apostol. He's a post, apostle to the Gentiles. Kaya meron siya ganyan karapatan na magpukutos. Pero sa panahon natin, pag si apostol natin, dito siya may karapatan na magpukutos. Okay, ng, 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 ng procedure. Pero wala siya karapatan, pakilaman ang procedure ng ibang church. Okay, so the, 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 the context lang natin is the reason why Paul has this authority. So sabi niya, but although Paul has the authority to do the discipline himself, he gave the discipline to the church. Corporately, that yung gagawin niya. This is an instruction. And you can find this throughout the Bible. Sa book of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, sa lahat po ng epistle before, there is always an instruction. Anong gagawin nyo sa mga tao na ayaw makinsan? Anong gagawin nyo sa mga tao na nagpipreach ng mali? Ito yung gagawin nyo, this fellowship with them. Put them away from among you. Huwag kayo, huwag niyo mo kayong kapayan kasama sila. Treat them as an infidel. Why? May kita pa natin dito kung yung mga words at muscle pull. Now, church discipline is a matter, ch uh, church discipline is a church matter and not to be decided upon by an individual. And uh, starting January, that would be what we would be applying in the church. Simula po sa January, that church discipline has to be decided by the church. Kaya nga po kung ikaw, gusto, uh, kas kasama ka sa simbahan na to, maraming decision, at maraming times na upo ka dyan at magkakaroon ng usapan. Okay? Hindi tapos na po yung times na nakaupo tayo, kaya ka na si Pastor mag-decide. Although he has, the, he, he is the overseer, 
He has the authority. We respect and we love him as a pastor. But then we are to exercise our authority as a church. And one of those authority that is given by us is to conduct church discipline. And that is uh, music nowadays. Wala na po tayo makita ngayon. I know of a church. Doon ako na graduate. I think the past two or three weddings, kinasal tayo ng buntes. And there is no discipline. Wala na suspension. Uh, kung meron man, hindi nyo lang kakakataraba. Bakit? Pastor pa rin yung kasal. Ang ganda pa ng kasal, garden wedding. Di ba? So, anong klaseng example? Sabi ni, sabi ni Paul, we do discipline. One, uh, mamaya we go there, but one reason why we do discipline is to show the people na hindi pwede to. So, what is what are you showing to the people? Kinakasal, malaki yung chance, si pastor pa yung nagkakasal. Ano kayo isipin ng mga nakaw po? Pwede mo yung mga doon eh. Okay lang pala. Papagalitan lang kami sa office ng dali. Tapos, tutulungan lang yung mga isang kasal. Hindi po ba that is why church discipline is important? This is the reason why uh, one of the problems na kaya nagkaroon ng downward slope ang Baptist church is because they lack church discipline. First, the, the first problem is they lack regenerate church membership. Yun na nagkuna na yung problema. Nung pumasok na sila constantly uh, nagkaroon na ng infant baptism, hindi na nila binigyan ang importansya yung save lang ang papasok sa church. After that, syempre, hindi mo pwede disiplinahin ng kambin. Nakapasok eh. Papano kung yung mga nakaupo ka lahat nila ng save? Ang pwede mo naman talaga disiplinahin at magpapasabit sa disiplinahin na yung taong ligtas. Now, ngayon, nakapasok na yung mga hindi ligtas sa church, the next thing that they do away, uh, they, uh, they did away with was church discipline. Hindi na natin, hindi na natin pwede niya pa yung discipline. Bakit? Ulit-ulit na ulit-ulit yung ginagawa ng pangpin. Hindi mo matulungan. Kaya yung isa pa naman po natin ngayon, hindi lang po siya basta natin non-existent na po church discipline. Kung meron ang discipline, yung pastor ang mga discipline. Siya lang. Siya ang papalo, siya ang mag-decide. Kaya po, ang tindi ng burden na yan. Kaya yung pastor, minsan nag-i-emotion eh. Kasi bakit? Ang dami, ang dami kailangan disiplina. O gano'n ko na lang, kaysa na yan. O gano'n ko na lang, kapalayasan na yan. Walang magagawa. Hindi po ba? That's why it's given to the church. Kaya pag pinag-usapan, walang hindi, hindi, ah, uh, hot uh, heads will not prevail, and then all the opinions will be heard. Kaya po, hindi din yan sa church. Kaya po, bawat isa, we have to pray for that, and the Holy Spirit will lead us in this kind of, ah, uh, business. Now, the, the, the discipline, we can see here, was given to the church. That is the authority of discipline. Next one, let's see the goal of discipline. Bakit po ba tayo nagkakaroon ng church discipline? Verse 5, verse 5, verse 5, verse 5, to deliver such an one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nung sinabi mo dito sa, dito, dito, dito. Okay, first point, the goal of church discipline is to give a chance to repent. Yan po yung punang goal. Hindi po ang, ang dapat po wala tayong attitude na disiplinahin niya para magpalayas. Wala po nga lang. Pag ganun ang attitude natin, maging agad. Hindi na tayo magiging objective. Ang muna natin goal is we will just put a person under discipline so that he will have a chance to repent. Sabi nito, to deliver such an one to Satan, it means excommunication. It means paalisin. Bakit? Hindi, sinasabi ko po ha, the context natin, this is about public offenses. Okay? Kinausap po, hindi na kinig, nagdarapahin, hindi na kinig, sinabihan ng church, hindi na kinig, alis. Ganun po kasi ito yung ano. Why? To deliver him to Satan. Why? Ano po yung purpose? Bakit siya kapalis eh? For the destruction of the flesh. Para yung flesh ni desire niya, kaya niya ginagawa ay mamatay. Para mawala, para ma-realize niya. Kasi kung totoong ligtas yan, Pinaalis ko sa comfort of the church, wala na siya sa brethren, magdun niya, pwede siya magka-chance na ma-realize. Kita niyo, at the end of the Apostle Paul has restoration in mind, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun ang goal. Kaya siya makakaalis eh, the reason why he will be this fellowship, kasi siya na, ito na example ng Mother Jane. Kaya siya makakaalis eh, para magkaroon naman siya ng chance na mag-isip-isip at mag-repent. That is the goal. That is the hope. Na mag-repent yung tao, to, 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 to give a chance to repent. That's the reason why we have church discipline. Sana po wala dito sa atin na natutuwa. Wala po sana dito sa atin na natutuwa pagka meron kumaalis, pagka meron kumaabsent, pagka meron na uh, hindi, uh, hindi na natin nakikita. But it's necessary na mawala mo na sila kahit sa talita. Kasi kung totoong ligtas yan, mabalik. Mag-repent. Yun ang sabi ni Kuya, Kuya Alice kanina, 
di ba? Totoo ligtas kung show fruits of repentance. Di ba? Isang sign ng tao ligtas mapuno, mag-repent, magpakumbaba ang isang bagay ng buhay. Kung hindi ligtas, he will remain outside. It's necessary. Although it hurts, it is needed. It is needful. Dahil hindi natin dapat ipaparalin yung emosyon natin, nakakaawa. No, no, no. Yan ang sabi ng Bible. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. Not you. Okay? Uh, to give a chance to repent. Next one is to protect the body. First, uh, verse number 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little will be meant to the full love. Para maprotektahan yung mga nasa loob. Kasi kung kahit may isa lang, na nagkamalat ng false doctrine. May isa lang na naninira sa mga leaders. May isa lang na sinundi, ginagawa ang mga members, sinisiraan si, si pastor, sinisiraan yung mga pastor, sinisiraan yung mga leaders, sinisiraan yung mga kapwa, pwede po masira ang church. Kaya nga sabi, at sa inyo agad, pagka ang Holy Spirit, ang Panginoon, na gumawa na ng paraan to make manifest this kind of thing uh, through the process of church discipline, at least, let them live. Uh, as I have said, why? Because they will return kung talaga mag- mag- sila ay makakakumbaba. Uh, it is important to remove him from the body as he brings others down with him. Mas maganda nga po immediately. Why? Kasi habang nandito, pwede siya makasila. And although it hurts, because lalo na sa atin, ang liit ng simbahan natin, bawat isa magkakilala. Kaya na to some degree, bawat isa talaga may pinagsabahan. Okay? At talaga merong closeness, merong, merong mga friendship. Kaya po, mas mahirap sa ganito si why? Because kahit isa lang mawala, mararamdaman mo. Pero well, alam, uh, uh, kaysa din sa church na may buli po, minsan di ko napansin, kahit sa pamilya, huwag di paanan, di ba? Pero yung ganito ang klase ng simbahan, dito sa itong congregation, maramdaman mo. Lalo na sa pastor na nagpipreach, sanay na siya, kung sino yung nakaupo, kung saan na nakaupo. And pag yung upuan na yun, wala nakaupo, alam na natin kung sino. Kaya nga po, masakit dapat sa church, masakit din sa pastor, masakit din sa mga leaders. Pero, as I have said, it is need, need, it's needful for the body. Bakit? Kung itong tao na ito ay hindi nila pinaalis, ano na naman gagawin niya? Sabi nga dito, if you will read the account, mayabang pa siya. Proud pa siya na may relasyon siya dun sa asawa ng tatay niya. Kaya sabi ni Paul, sabi ni Paul pag nagsama-sama kayo, alisin niyo na. Bakit? Baka mag-repent? Pangalawa, kung hindi mag-repent, baka hindi na maka-apekto na hindi ba? Okay, that is the one of our number of church discipline. Next one, verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that, that he may be a new love, as ye are given. For even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity. And truth. One more reason why church discipline is important is because the church has to go through continual purging. It has to go through continual purging. Once a church decides to obey the Lord in everything, to obey the Bible in everything, there will be people na hindi talaga mananatili. You can see that. It is, uh, I don't know, kung ba, siyempre lalo na yung mga ba, hindi pa lang nasa mag-perch dito sa harapan. Pero kung meron mga members na pagmatagal yung preaching, iba na yung mukha. May members na pagka masyadong malalang yung preaching, hindi na alam. Bakit? I believe na hindi pa gano'n na abot yung maturity nila or hindi talaga sila interesado sa Bible. And pag ang church nag-design that we will go, we will obey the Bible and everything, we will dig deep into the Bible, there will be people na say, I don't want any part. Shadow akong busy for that. I don't want to go to church for Bible studies. I don't want to individually invest time to read the Bible. Ayaw ko. Dahil kailangan may pastor, kailangan may leaders para pag Sunday na matulong kami konti. Pag mayroon mayroong attitude, eventually, aalis. If the church will go to church. And then we have, we have seen the, the, the uh, testimony of uh, um, Maranatha Baptist Church. Maraming nawala sa kanila. But it's necessary, bakit kung gusto talaga natin na maging maayos ang ating simbahan? Although it, it, it does uh, hurt to, uh, for some people to leave, regenerate people will still commit sin, but has the will to repent. Ito po, hindi po po sinasabi na, oh, kasi hindi ko dapat maging perfect, hindi magkakalala. As I have said, uh, maraming marami pa rin tayong mga inaayos sa sarili natin. But, kung talagang ligtas, ano na natin, okay, hindi po maayos na maayos. 
Okay? Kaya po, uh, ang kaya yung, yung discipline, ang isang purpose niya is pinapakita ka ng pakikon sa atin. Sino ba yung pangbrain? Sino ba yung pupa talaga? And, 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 and through the Bible, we can see, we can judge. Ano? Parang, parang masyado ka naman. Pagsalita. Sir Alex, masyado ka naman. Agad naman yung biligtas. Di ba? The Bible is there. The Bible said na yung mga putay na ligtas, yung mga umalis, at di bumalay naman sabi ni Paul, because they're not really with us. Kung talagang sa atin yan, hindi sila aalis. Yung sabi ni Paul, di ba? It's very clear in the Bible. You can judge if someone is uh, saved or not based on the fruits that they are showing in their life. Uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. This is one great reason why we need to go to a virgin. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Yun ang holy. Na yung mga matita na sa simbahan ay yung mga tao na dedicated at gusto gumawa para sa Panginoon. Verse 15, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Because I mean, the reason why we have to go through purging is so that we will stay pure as a church. The reason that God, God said that He might present it to Himself a pure church. I'm not saying sinless church, but I believe when I the word the pure, that means you mga tao ay niktas That's why we need to go through purging. Kapag din ko ba yung movie na The Purge? Kung ano sarap sa sarap ng olin na nito, lalo na sa mga may tinatawong pamutan na sa sarili. Pero panoorin niyo para imagine mo na lang yung ilawang matis na imagine mo, di ba? Yung, yung sa mga hindi ko na kapanood, uh, yung, yung, yung uh, movie na yon sa Amerika, zero ang crime rate. Bakit? Bibigyan nila lang ito ng hearts ba? Hindi 24, 7 to 7 eh. Ah, 12 to 7. Basta yun. Bibigyan nila lang 12 hours in one year. Ang buong Amerika, that crime is legal. All crime, all crimes are legal. Pero well, lang, hindi ko lang pwedeng galawin yung mga government officials and syempre president o bako tayo baka nasa ng purging, wala na ng gobyerno, di ba? Pwede mong gawin. Pwede kang pumatay sa loob ng 12 hours. Pwede kang mag-rape. Pwede kang mag-knockout. Walang, hindi ka lang nila ikukulong. Kaya yung mga matitinong tao, binalagyan nila ng security yung kanila mga bahay para pag tunog nung uh, start ng purging, hindi sila mapatay. Kasi yun doon, minsan, kapatay mo, mapatay ka pila. Kaya yun ang ginagawa nila, fixin nyo ang buong taon. Yung gana nyo, i-kill nila. After pagka-purging na, doon nyo nilabas, patayin nyo natin gusto nyo patayin. Para bang kinikulansin nila yung sarili nila doon sa hate and everything. And that, yun, yun, po yung, yun po yung goal sa church. To purge the church na dumaan through fire. At yung tulay lang naging to ang lalabas after the purging. And it's, it hurts, but it's necessary. Kailangan mong mangyari. That's the reason why this church is going through that. And, I, I, and, I'm, and I'm glad, in a way, because God is honoring the desire of this church. Because he, kung hindi kumilos ang Panginoon, that means, siguro sa mga pa, hindi naman pala talaga seryoso, huwag na lang. Pero bakit na siguro ng Panginoon, seryoso tayo sa ginagawa na ito, okay, I will help you. Ito yung mangyari. Ito yung mangyari. First John 2, 28. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So that's the reason why we are doing church discipline. Is first of all to give a chance to repent. That is the very first goal. And if not, to protect the body of this person that is an unruly person. Next is purging. I believe that every biblical church goes through this. Uh, but, pagka meron tayong set of rules, may quality, clear, hindi lang po ganun kabigat. Kasi, ibig sabihin, hindi na lalaki yung problema. Konti pa lang, nasusolusyonan na agad, tapos agad. Kung i-apply ko ng bawat isa, kung i-apply ko ng bawat isa, kung hindi, ay lalo pong lalalala. Kaya po, sa ginagawa natin, if you're going to apply this, if you're going to be part of this uh, reorganization, then we need to pray to God na tulong pa tayo, na gawin natin yung part natin. Then, magkakaroon na yung church that can really glorify God in everything that we are doing. Okay? Uh, that is the goal of discipline. First is the authority is given to the church. Hindi po sa isang individual na tao. The goal is the, of discipline is to give a chance to repent, to protect the body, and then the church has to go through purging. Okay? 
Again, uh, dapat po si Kuya Rizal yung mag-privilege ngayon kasi nangyong sa talk sa kanya na uh, sir ako na mula gusto ko lang po yung present ng jerseys ng kids sa church Dapat ako ba yung mga talaga yung mayo Nagbigyan niya po ako Uliti ko eh Then gusto ko rin po na kasi next week po na si Daddy At least nandiyan siya mag-privilege ko to Pag may mali ako, ma-correct niya po ako Okay? Kasi baka nga kasi po, ugali nga po o minsan okay So, okay, so we've seen the authority of discipline, role of discipline, and now the importance of discipline. First, uh, verse 9, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. It seems here, ito yung isang proweba, na meron ng epistle, bago yung first Corinthians. Meron na kung nang sulat si Paul sa kanila. Kaya sabi niya, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Verse 10, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. Kiniklin niyo po. Baka nung first letter niya, ang naipindihan lang itong mga tao sa COVID ay mag-separate kayo sa mga 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 tao sa Muslim Church. Pero kung hindi nyo po, hindi, hindi ko lang ibig sabihin ko. Okay? Or with the covetous or questioners or with the idolaters. For them, as he needs to go out of the world. Okay? It is a given, una, na hindi talaga ang tao na nasa simbahan niya hindi pag-fellowship sa mga tao sa labas. By fellowship, I mean you have things in common na na pagkakasiyahan nyo na nagkakasuto kayo. That means the only business we have with them is to try to bring them in. Okay? Pero sinasabi ko, teka teka, hindi yun yung ibig sabihin ko. Ibig sabihin ko sa inyo mismo. Kayo. Sabihin, sa loob ng church, mayroong mga ganong klaseng tao. Ibig sabihin, may mga tao sa labas, iniisip nila lang, may volunteers and everything. Meron na sa loob. Sabi ni Paul sa kanila, meron na sa loob ng church, kaya don't fellowship with them. I'm not saying, sabi ni Paul, I'm not talking about separation from the world. That's a given. What's a given? We have to disfellowship from the world. But, you also have to disfellowship from people in the church that are acting like the world. That is what uh, the Apostle Paul is saying. Uh, Kinikuli niya, dito sa... Verse uh, 11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother, sa loob na simbahan, be a fornicator, or a covetous, or an adulterer, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one not to eat. Once God made these things manifest in, in, in our midst, we have to act. Hindi lang basta sinabi na sa church yung problem yung ginawa ni Seth, Okay? The Bible says not even to eat with them. Pag ang tao ay under discipline. And once a person is declared uh, that the disfellowship sa atin, we should not even be, uh, have a relationship with them. Kaya nga po, kung nagbasa po kayo ng church history, pag ang isang tao ang kasala, ayaw mag-repent, tas uh, uh, tiniwala. Pag kayo yung pamilya niya, Nakamdaral sa mga sama na basa ko, yung pamilya niya, ayaw siyang i-excommunicate din sa kanila yung pamilya pa palasin din. Doon po, uh, if, you, if, if you read uh, yung mga yung mga naong ng sipahan, doon po, bakit? Kasi yung loyal ni Hate. And the reason why, that, and God demands complete loyalty to the word of God. And if you, and if you decide to be part of this church, everyone will expect that your loyalty is completely to God and His Word. Not even to the pastor, not even to the leaders, not even to your family members. And, I, and hard as it may be, but that's what the Bible is saying. Kaya nga po sinasabi nila kayo, naawa ka, sama ka. Ayaw mo siya pala siya, sige, sumama ka. Bakit? Dito tayo eh, ito yung, ito yung decision of church. Hindi ka na gagawin, go. Uh, I guess I'm just, uh, mamamaya ko ba? medyo babain ako dun sa aspiration. Yun yung kasi discipline mo na tayo eh. At least, yun 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 nangyayari ko. Kaya ka sabi, kung they're a family of 10, and yung bunso, nagkasala, pinalis, ayaw, ayaw, mag, ayaw magbago, at yung pamilya, kinagelosip pa rin siya, lahat kayo yung sampo, alis. That is uh, the, the, the church discipline. Kaya ka sabi, not even to eat with them. Kaya nga po, in the past, we had some members na na uh, dinisiplina ng ating pastor but then ang naging problema nagkaroon ng mga sympathizers na lumapit ko nung kaya mo yan uh, kaya mo yung maglalap ko sa lulit niya parang ano yung joke joke lang yung discipline di ba? Well, uh, parang bang sabi nung siguro sabi ko sige kayo na lang bahala dinisiplina ka lang bahala kung mahawa ka lang and the reason why we have to let God 
us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Napakaliwala po ng Bible sabi, kaya sila tinapaalis, paano makita mo ang pamalik? Iba nga sabi, umahal ko nalaga, pakawalan mo, pagumalik sa iyo. Yung mga inaaplay. Yung po yung, yun yung mga yun. Hindi ko siguro kung makapalaga nila sa Bible yun. Sa Bible po yun, hindi yan sa pag-ibig. Pag pinakawalan mo, ako lang iba, pahalang sa tuloy ka. Masalahan ko sa iyo. Okay? So, natin na bakas ko na ako. They went out from us, para naman makita natin talagang ligtas. Para makita mo talaga ligtas. Bakit? Yung tao ng ligtas, kung papagpaba, magpapasabit sa discipline, na magpapakita ng tunay na fruits of repentance. Ang tao ng ligtas, yun yung naman kung tinanggal nyo ako dyan, hindi mas okay pa, hindi na ako kailangan magpate, hindi na ako kailangan magpigay, hindi na ako kailangan magpato, malaya. Sabi, hindi kaya talaga mahal. Hindi talaga mahal ng church. Hindi talaga mahal ng simbahan. Yung po yung, uh, yung po yung, uh, ano doon, that they, that they, it might, that they might be made manifest para makita natin kung tunay nga siya ng Diyos. Kaya nga po, it's wise na isang pinagalong din namin natin that put a person in probation. Kasi meron po tao na once na-realize niya mali siya, magsusorya ka dyan. But, hindi nga lang basta sorry yun. Siyempre, kaya nga nilalagay sila ang probation. Now, the church has to decide how long. Three months, four months, five months, six months. And then the church will see if there's genuine repentance. Now, look at the nice text natin. Verse number five. Second to just do five. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. First point, public offenses hurt the entire body. We have to realize that we are one. We have to realize that we are one body. Kaya sabi ni Paul, whether personal, yung kasalanan ng tao ng personal life po, sabi niya, hindi lang ako nasaktan, kayo din. Sana po ganun po tayo, pagka may mga tao na sasaktan sa simbahan, lahat po tayo nag, ah, ah, we are going to have to sympathize. Hindi ko alam eh. Ayun na, empathize pa lang. Hindi, sympathize. Nakikiramay tayo sa kanya. Di ba, pagka may mga tao na nasaktan, dapat lahat tayo nakikiramay. Pagka may mga members sa church, kalit na kumpay, lahat tayo masaya sa kanya. Wala po dito that has to act na hindi siya pati ng katawan. That's the reason why we're having problems. Bakit dahil may mga mga tao that are acting that they're not part of the body. Reorganization, sige, bahala kayo dyan. Kinuha yung church quality, tinabi lang, hindi pinasa. We have to realize that hindi magsasaksin to kung hindi tayo lahat ikilos. We have to realize that kaya ako You have to act like you're part of this body. Pagka may organization, basta parang malito. Ito basta rayusin natin. Ito basta parang mas maganda kung malito. The good thing in this church is everyone has a voice. Lahat po kayo pwede magsalita. Lahat po kayo, any one of you can object. Any one of you can say what they think. That is the good thing in this church. But, ang pangit eh, meron talaga mga walang pakinan. And that's the truth. Meron po mga tao, and, and, and it's uh, as hard it is na isipin o tanggapin, may mga tao na nandito because of their job. Only. Yeah. Only because of their job. I will stay in this church baka mawala na akong trabaho. And I hope, I hope, wala talaga, I hope sa isip ko lang yan. But, baka, baka may akong ganun. The reason why you're not acting as part of the body is only because of that. Uh, Anak ni Pastor Yung Admin, yung diary ako, pag-umalis ako. Asawa ni Pastor Yung Admin, yung diary ako, pag-umalis ako. Dati, si Kaya Alex Yung Admin, Pritchard Yung Admin, diary ako, pag-umalis ako. Hindi po, may tisod na nga kayo, di ba? Okay, by the job, that's good. Sana po walang ganun dito. And it's our prayer na kung meron mga kanon na magbago. At kung hindi magbago, that God will remove them from this time. Kaya ako sabi ni Paul, okay, nung ko lang balik na, di ba? Ang tigas niya. Sabi niya, ayusin nyo ito, ayusin nyo ito. Sabi niya, ay pagdating ko dyan, ayusin natin. Now, it seems here na sa context nito, ay lang pang umaba na naging tao. It showed real repentance. Kaya dito sa verse 6, sabi niyo po, sufficient to such a man is the punishment which was inflicted of many. Okay na yung perkusan niyo. Okay na yung discipline tapos na. Sabi niyo po, bakit? Last, verse number 7, Verse 7 So that contrary wise, he ought rather to 
forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch joy. Now, Paul, is, Paul knows, alam niya, na meron mga tao sa simbahan na ayaw talaga molesto yung tao na yung disiplinan. Kaya sabi ni Paul, okay na nga sa akin yung ginawa niyong disiplinan. Patawarin niyo naman na siya. Nag-repent na eh. Nagbabago na eh. Nagbabago na na alam ko na naman niya ako, oh, gusto kong baguhin, gusto kong magayos. Ang job na lang sa pagsimbahan, matuwa. Kasi kung yun talaga ang doon natin, at nag-repent, eh di praise the Lord. Kaso nga lang, siguro baka kaya ang iba na. <laughs> Sana yung ibonis. Kaya kaya sabi ni Paul, huwag ganon. Huwag naman ganon. Gusto sa version ni Pablo, huwag ganon, huwag ganon, huwag ganon, huwag ganon, huwag ganon, huwag ganon, patawarin na na yan. Ayos na eh, di ba? Huwag naman ganon. Sabi ni, sabi ni Apostle Paul. Bakit? Kasi baka naman, gusto naman pa ako, sinipan niyo pa, ayaw niyo pang patawarin, you're still holding, holding it against him. Eh di, alas din mo. Sayang. Sayang yung repentance, sayang yung joy and restoration na, na, na pwede natin, na pwede natin mamaranasan. Paul also emphasized that the church is one body. Kaya ako dapat lahat tayo na nararamdaman po natin yan. Um, let's get out of here. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Sabi po dito, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. Uh, verse 21 of the same chapter. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of feet. Nor again of the, again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more people are necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable, upon this we bestow more abundant honor. And our, and our uncommon parts have more abundant commonness. For our common parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Bakit? That there should be no schism in the body. Tama pa yung bako? Schism in the body. But that the members should have the same care one for another. Dapat po ganito yung attitude natin is in restoration. Actually, ito dapat yung attitude mo in the start of discipline. That you care for the person. We're not disciplining the person and, 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 and mas, mas, masaya tayo dahil ito yung going through this kind of things. Dapat nararamdaman natin yung bakit kasama ng katawan niya eh. Kasama niya eh. Kapatiran natin niya eh. Pwede kabagaan ako pa yun eh. Kaya dapat masasaktan pa rin. Hindi mo sinasabi siya ng sabi niya po sa ko. Bakit? Pagka mayroong hindi nakikisa sa so even, even sa emotion ng simbahan, even sa decision ng simbahan, siya yung nagpapost ng division. And then that person has to somehow go under, uh, be under discipline. Ibig sabihin po ng schism means Split or gap or division. Kaya ako dito sa church yung makahirap. We are preaching a theology that might be new to the ears of some people. Hindi po ba? Hindi po ba? Siguro sa iba sa inyo, pagdating yung dito, nalain niyo siya, parang iba yung preaching dito. Iba yung preaching sa sakas ng takasanayan namin. Iba sa brilliant, iba sa brilliant, iba, iba sa na, mahal. Betal niya. Iba doon sa mga yung galing ako church yan. Kaya ako po dapat pagdali lang sa isip din eh. Kasi dito ka na member. Wala na ugali na brilliant kami. Wala na ugali na betali kami. Wala na ugali na kapapatan kami. Bisaya kami. Tagalog kami. Dapat mo naman ugali dito. Hati-hati dapat sa simbahan. Lahat kayo yung isa. I don't know, understand that everyone has a different personality and then slowly kahit ako napag-aaralan ko yan sa bawat isa as we deal with people here. But, Pagdating sa goal, pagdating sa decision ng church, dapat iisan. Hey. Hindi po dapat iwayo wala, hindi po dapat bahabahagi. Kaya ako hindi tayo dapat nagpo-cause na division. Next point, once true repentance is shown, our responsibility, responsibility, responsibility is to restore the person. Okay, verse 7 again, so that contrary wise, he ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up in over much sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. Yun yung attitude. Paramdam nyo, mabahal nyo naman siya. Okay? Hindi yung pinaparamdam nyo na buti nga sa iyo. Mahal ka namin. May nagbabago ka. We will, through our love, we will help you stand up, up again and serve the Lord again. Amen. That is the ultimate goal. And, and, and I can't imagine what kind of joy may bibigay yun sa puso 
bawat isa. Na may tao ng walis for a time, na tumubalay at nagpakita ng pagbabago, ginamit ng Panginoon sa kanyang gawain. Praise the Lord. Diyan po, mangyayari lang yan, true members who are spiritual. The Bible says, uh, if, if, if a man, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, uh, restore such restore such an one. Kaya kung tayo nakakaintindi, kung tayo matured, hindi tayo matutuwa kung may malis. Matutuwa tayo kung may kumabali yung very score. Right. Verse number 9, Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry. Now, uh, it seems here that uh, the, the person has shown, uh, you know, true repentance. Okay, take the word repentance. Hindi lang po yung word is sorrow. Kasi meron mga so sorry kasi nalaman. Pero may mga so sorry kasi gusto talaga magpago. That is something that the Holy Spirit has to help us to discern. Now, pag yung tao na sorry, bibigay mo nung time na pakita yung truth of repentance. Kasi madali mag sorry. Kung isang, kung isang, kung isang sorry lang naman tapos na, isang sorry lang ang kasatid kayo ni Pastor, madali yun eh. Pero iba yung anim, laban, pitong kwan, kailangan mo patunayan ng bago ka. The Holy Spirit will confirm it to each and every one. Again, the, the, the church has to decide. So, um, verse number 9 tayo. Proper, bakit, bakit na restore? What's the reason for uh, restoring? Verse 9. For to this end also did I write that I might know the truth of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. Okay, uh, this is something that we should have already done before. Kung gagawin niyo ay kung sinasabi ko. First then, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it for your sins, forgive gave I it in the person of Christ. So, uh, and, 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 so for me, this is a great point. Because sinasabi ni Paul, Christ is the ultimate. Uh, uh, example of restoration. We are just restored. Once we were sinners, once we were separated from God, once we were heading for hell, but Christ, through His sacrifice, made a way for you to be restored into the family of God. That's the reason why, para bang sinasabi, ang sinasabi na, kayo alam na restore, kaya kayo naligtas. Anong, anong klaseng, uh, at anong parapatan mo na hindi Okay, that is the point here. Uh, next verse. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Bakit kailangan mong restore? Para hindi magdamitin ng jambro yung moment na yan para si Ryan. Because we are not ignorant of his devices. And that is a great blessing. That a thorough reading of the Bible will warn you of every way the devil can destroy you. And every way that the devil can destroy the church. And one way that the devil can destroy the church is if the church does not handle this incorrectly and restoration correctly. Kaya ka sabi niya po, so ayusin niyo na. Nagpakumbaba na, restore him. Baka naman sa pag-ibis ng pan-historia, lalo pa divide the church. We are not ignorant of his devices, mga kapatid. Kaya ka po dapat, let's guard our heart. Sa nangyayari sa simbahan natin, pagpakabag na yung kurang ng puso natin, anong attitude natin sa nangyayari na yun? What is our attitude towards each other? What is our attitude towards a brother who is going through discipline? What is our attitude towards a brother who is showing genuine repentance? Why? Kasi in this na maging blessing, pwede isang maling puso lang kasumihan na. The devil has been doing this for more, for more years than we can imagine. The devil has been doing this for a long time. Marami siya laging ng simbahan na nag-discipline, na nag-restore, at alam niya kung paano sisirain even in the midst of proper restoration. Kaya nga, hindi, ang responsibility natin to guard our own hearts. Baka ikaw ang gamitin ng job ko para makasila. Hindi yung tao na nilisiplina. Di ba ba? That's why, uh, a discipline and restoration, it is given to the church. It is given to us, it is our responsibility to properly do it inside this church. As I have said, you know, we can study a, a lot more about discipline and you can do that in your own time as well. But what po natin sana isipin that through this uh, reorganization, parang malupit na lang bigla ng church. Why? Kaya lang po tayo nangiging malupit or mahimpit is because we're going back to what the Bible really wants us to do. And if you do not agree, the door is always open for you to leave. And if you, and 
that someday you realize na mali ako, tama yung sabahin, you can always go back. Always, you can always go back. Why? Because it is also given to us to restore a person who is repenting uh, genuinely sa, sa, sa harapan ng power. Na ako maitindihan po natin yan. Uh, let's guard our attitude. Let's guard what we are, uh, kung ano yung magiging attitude po sa ginagawa ng sabahin. And pray. Uh, alis mo yung pasang natin sa Tuesday. Uh, he will leave for a couple of uh, week, uh, two weeks. Uh, yeah, he will leave for two weeks. Pagbalik niya, dire-diretso na, the organization. We'll call a pastor, we'll set up demons, uh, elders in the church, we'll set up uh, offices na kailangan sa pag-aayos. We'll, 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 we'll prepare our uh, church calendar on all of these things. The question is, are you on board? Masali ka ba? Gusto mo talaga sumali? Kung talagang gusto mong sumali at kung talagang gusto mong makisa, ibigay mo yung lahat mo. Do your best in what you're doing. And if not, please spare this church of future problems and live until you realize somehow na nama pala or talagang na-realize mo yung ibang talaga ako para sa bahay. So that is, that is one thing that we need to pray for. And sana po bawag isa at umuha po ng Panginoon sa ating ginagawa. Let us not pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon for, uh, for the passage.